Good morning, class. We're going over some of the notes today on alleles, genes, and selection. If there was a word of the day, it would be selection today. And I want to go over some of the things that we've seen in our notes on Google Classroom and on the blog, and in particular, patterns. What it is that you talk about when you're talking about passing on genes, what are you really passing along? And what you're passing along to the next generation is just a pattern in the DNA. People always talk about, well, passing on your DNA and passing on your genes. What you're really passing on is a pattern of A, T, C's, and G's. I'm going to start with a quick story, a uh, personal story on growing up here in Millbrae. Uh, a couple miles from where I am right now, uh, my brother and sister and I grew up uh, just a couple blocks away over by Cappuccino High School. And my sister Valerie learned to swim. Um, I spent a lot of time in a neighbor's pool right next door. She had an awesome neighbor. She would let us come on over, swim in her, her pool in the backyard. And my sister used to like it so much. My sister would uh, swim there all the time whenever she got a chance. I remember when I was a little kid, my sister's uh, just a little bit older than me, and I remember hearing uh, somebody say, I think my grandmother said, well, you know what, Val's going to, she's going to get wet fingers and, and turn into a fish. And I remember thinking when I was a kid, like, well, if you do something enough, you know, will that happen? Will you all of a sudden get those traits? Will you all of a sudden, if you swim all the time like Val used to, uh, will you start, you know, to, to, get characteristics that would help you swim faster. Doesn't really work like that. With genetics, what you have, what you have to work with as an individual organism is just the pattern of DNA that you were given by your parents. So let's talk about that for just a second. Um, my sister is swimming. No, no matter how much time she spent in the pool, she was not gonna grow gills or get fins or uh, swim, swim uh, better because she changed her characteristics. She might certainly get to be a better swimmer because of developing cardiovascular uh, capabilities, but not because all of a sudden she would somehow develop a trait just because you used it. Um, here's an example that came out of the news today. I just was flipping through the news and I looked through my news feed and they had a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger's son. Now, if you don't know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is or, or was in California, he's an actor. He was the governor for a while of California. And uh, he was also famous before that for being a bodybuilder. He won the, I think, uh, Mr. And you'll have to prove me because I don't follow bodybuilding, Mr. Olympia or Mr. America, I don't know which it is. Um, but the bodybuilding competition, he won that, I think, a couple of times. And kind of famous for that. And they showed his son, and his son is uh, a weightlifter now too, and he's got big muscles too. But the thing is this. Arnold Schwarzenegger spent a lot of time in a gym lifting weights. He got uh, you know, huge muscles doing this. Does that mean that if he had a son or daughter that he or she would necessarily be born with those types of muscles? Not really, it doesn't work like that. You can work on a trait continuously, but if Arnold Schwarzenegger's son, for example, uh, was a distance runner, something that doesn't involve a lot of heavy weightlifting, but instead involves a lot of uh, distance running, distance runners tend to be very skinny and thin, um, and it would be one of those things where, no, he wouldn't have those giant muscles just because he was the son of somebody who worked on these characteristics, you don't pass on characteristics just because you have worked on something. For example, if you are a great tennis player, your kids will not be born automatically being fantastic tennis players. It is only a pattern of DNA that you pass on. What a person or what an organism does with those patterns that they have, well, that depends on what they work on during their lifetime, but it does not change your DNA. It does not change this pattern, the A, T, C's, and G's. So remember, if you check out the A, T, C's, and G's up here, really, really quickly, if this is DNA unzipped and laid out here, this is some little section of DNA that's telling your ribosomes what protein to make. What's going to be over here, A, T, T, G, C, T? Can you quickly like look at that and say, hey, what's gonna go on the other side? Well, if you look back on the notes, if you check out what we've been talking about in class, we know right away, over here, oh, there's going to be a T. Over here, there's going to be an A, there's, there's an A, there's a C, there's a G, there's an A. Always, 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 you have an A pairing with a T and a C pairing with a G. Later on, when we talk about RNA, what happens with the DNA is there's this other molecule that goes in. It basically unzips the molecule. It looks at half the pattern and it's able to tell exactly what protein to make based on this pattern. So the long and the short of it, the reason for the stories about Arnold Schwarzenegger and my sister is this. You're not passing on ever a physical characteristic 
like something that you've worked on over your lifetime, what a person passes on when they have kids is a pattern of DNA. You're not passing on anything, for example, if you really, really worked hard in a particular sport. Your kids, if you have kids, they're not going to be born just you know, naturally good at that sport. It doesn't work that way. What you're passing on is a pattern. Um, if you check out very, very quickly two other things that you're going to see in the notes, um, a little bit on how humans have gone a little bit beyond natural selection. Um, in the case of cats, jellyfish, and glowing in the dark, we talked a little bit about this in class, just wanted to be, be real clear on it. If you look at cats, a cat has 19 pairs of chromosomes, a jellyfish, um, 22 pairs of chromosomes, completely different species. You've got a mammal here, you've got a nadarian, um, species that in nature couldn't possibly uh, mate and have kids, um, wildly different chromosomes, wildly different lifestyles, completely different species, down to different evolutionary branches. But the point is this. There are cats in the lab that actually have a gene where they can glow in the dark. Now, specifically, these cats don't run around you know, glowing when it's dark out. What they do is they can shine black light on the cat. And the cat will then glow if they have this particular gene that's been genetically snipped from a jellyfish and put into the cat. Here's the important point. Um, they did this, the researchers did this, by the way, they were looking at the way HIV possibly is transmitted uh, down the generation, or if it can be transmitted, or if it can be um, uh, picked up in utero. The point is that in nature, no matter how long we have here on Earth, you would never have a gene from a cat and a gene from a jellyfish spontaneously or somehow get from one species to another. What you do have with genetic engineering is this. Remember chromosomes? They look like these little fuzzy X's in our book right now. They literally take a gene, they take a piece of the DNA from the jellyfish, and they move it over to the DNA, the genome, of the cat. The reason for doing this was they wanted to track uh, the, the, the offspring and see if they, if they, if they uh, inherited these genes from the parent. But with genetic engineering, it's really, really important to uh, remember, now with genetic engineering, this goes beyond natural selection. Genetic engineering goes beyond natural selection by literally taking genes from one species and transferring them to another. As a matter of fact, there's one of the articles that I'll put up there that has to do with genetically modified foods. And the reason we would genetically modify a food is to try and make it resistant to pests and to, to blight and disease. Um, there's a little bit of controversy, as you might imagine, with uh, taking DNA from one species and putting it into another. Uh, again, that'll be addressed in some of the reading, but it's important to remember this goes a little bit beyond natural selection. When you look at natural selection, you're looking at m mixing the existing uh, alleles within a species. Um, if you check out, and I was going to have it up here by my lunch, I've got an apple for lunch, a big green apple part of my lunch uh, box. Um, with artificial selection. If you look at apples the way they evolved on this planet, they were never normally that large. They're never normally that big that you see from my, I think this is a, a, a Trader Joe's apple that I have here. But the apple that I'm going to have for lunch today, it's, it's huge and green and perfect looking. It's because people who have been selecting the apple trees to breed with each other over many, many, many generations have selected the types of apples that they want, and over a great time, they get the, the traits that they want. They, they're going for the characteristics they like. They aren't guaranteed to get it, but you have a better and better chance of getting the traits that you want. Um, in the case of natural selection, natural selection happens because nature itself, like the fuzzy wasn't with uh, the uh, example from a couple of days ago, nature selects based on which ones survive and which ones don't, which characteristics are going to be passed down. We'll talk a lot more about natural selection all next week. But artificial selection, that's just when people select. Um, think about, for example, one last thing, uh, dogs. If you look at all the dog species that are out there, out, outside the classroom right now, I saw you know, people walking poodles and Labradors and Doberman pinchers, all kinds of different dogs. A long time ago, 
all these species of dogs, or excuse me, all these, all these uh, uh, different types of dogs did not exist. All these uh, different breeds of dogs, I should say, didn't exist. Um, there, was, there was, of course, coyotes, wolves, foxes, uh, wild dogs, uh, dingoes, but there was not the wild number of breeds of dogs that you see. There was no uh, herds of poodles out on the plains of Africa bringing down wildebeest and you know, tearing them apart. Uh, why? They didn't exist yet. People artificially selected for the characteristics that they'd want in a particular pet, a particular animal. Some dogs were bred because they're really good at going after rodents. When they figured out that rodents were causing disease, for example, in London, they bred small dogs with short legs to go in after the rodents. Um, if you check out other dogs, they were bred because they were wonderful at doing things like helping herd sheep. Uh, dogs and all the varieties that you see were mostly artificially selected by people. They selected which dogs would breed to go for the characteristics that they want. Were they guaranteed to get it? No, they can only work with the existing genes, the existing alleles. But the important thing is to remember that what they were trying to do is pass on a particular pattern to the next generation. And by selecting which ones will breed together, you have a better chance of getting the characteristics that you're going for. So next week, we're going to be talking uh, quite a bit about natural selection, artificial, artificial selection, excuse me, and a little bit about genetic engineering, because your generation, uh, the sixth graders that are watching this right now, your generation is growing up in a time when we're just at the beginning of being able to actually manipulate the genome. It's a pretty exciting and pretty amazing thing that they're doing. Uh, we've actually mapped the human genome now. And so when you look at next week, it's going to focus a little bit more heavily on the technology now and how humans are actually able to change what naturally occurred in DNA patterns and instead select very specifically for some traits. We'll talk about this more on the notes. Have a great day, and I hope you have a great weekend. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.